Hello and welcome to the health program on Trust Television. I'm Aisha Salihu. On this episode of Health Living, our conversation is taking a different and more innovative approach towards ensuring more sustainable pathways for public health interventions. The fast development of technological of digital technologies, I beg your pardon, provides a fundamentally new understanding of improving public health by using digitalization, especially in prevention and health promotion. As digitization plays a large role in an increasing number of health systems, these may sound like a lot of work and may not be easily comprehensible. But I have joining me in the studio to explore the use of digital solutions in public health interventions. Francis Ayo is a digital project manager for eHealth Africa. Welcome on the program. Thank you for having me. Now, the world has fast evolved into a computer village where people connect with other people in different communities with the use of digitalization. And I'm sure experts like yourself would say it's applicable to all sectors. So let's start with a better understanding of what this, you know, digitization means. Right. Um, digitization um, essentially provides opportunity for any stakeholder or within a particular industry to align their current process, however manner or um, requiring human intervention to delivery improvement in their processes and ultimately uh, the end result that is uh, achievable. What that means uh, in our domain is around how we provide enablement, leveraging the vehicle of uh, information technology to bring around improvement, uh, visibility, and uh, capacity building. And importantly, um, how impact uh, are recorded in the field where our work is mainly and also providing data capacity for decision maker to quickly uh, turn around stories that, um, of course, you and I will always be happy to see people who were, who were once healed from uh, all sorts of ailment becoming well again and returning back to their normal life. This is what digital uh, enablement means for us in this domain. Now, I understand, you know, you in your definition, you captured a lot of, you know, the stakeholders and also the fact that um, information, technology and all that. But now, let us bring it back to the health sector. You and I know it has a wide range of spectrum. It stems from public health institutions to human resource for health and then to medicines and pharmaceutical products, you know, health policies. We did talk about stakeholders, you know. Now, how do you think digitalization can strengthen synergy? Awesome question, I must say. Um, it is also because synergy for us is a way to go today. And looking at all the various spectrum, um, starting off from identifying what the key problem or pain points are, then also designing um, corresponding solution innovatively. And very interestingly now today, we co-create with um, patients both in the field and those that consult at various centers. So with all of this together we are able to innovate and come up with digital solutions that help every player to become more resourceful and ultimately deliver uh, impactful results. How these also further strengthen or help the whole uh, industry boils around leveraging ICT. ICT here, you will agree with me uh, about how the lack of that capacity has hampered development in terms of visibility. Here, uh, I give you a use case around blood information, I mean blood information system. In blood information, you are looking at um, how you create demand for donors and how easy it is for them to get to donation points and of course, tested, bleeded into the relevant bags, becoming available at the storage center or blood banks, and also the um, uh, healthcare workers, the doctors, the nurses, and uh, other auxiliary uh, team members, you know, having access or having a view into what is available to enable them plan their transfusion uh, care for a patient who requires blood. So, mm. providing uh, that capacity provided that visibility and accountability across the divide up to the last 
mal or last user last user here is the patient right and the family too are also impacted by this so providing that visibility providing that improved efficiency across the chain is how that synergy works is how each player make their own input and eventually we have a solution that we can call our own when we say our own we are talking about something that brings sukkah that brought that brings hope that brings healing that brings joy to the patient and of course the general public yeah you did talk about provision of visibility and i also would like to refer you to the fact that you mentioned efficiency and you know we're talking about how we can achieve universal health coverage for all you know where each and every individual every nigerian citizen has access you know equal access to health now you're talking about digital ICT, you know, digital solutions. How do we, you know, merge both just so every Nigerian out there understands that through the use of digital solutions, you know, as an intervention for public health, uh, uh, for public health, we can also achieve universal health coverage. Right. Um, if you recall the recent um, experience across the globe, uh, COVID in particular, mm -hmm. It came as a big hit to all the stakeholders. And we were all scampering for solution. Right. Even identifying where tests could be done and information you know, required to even care for anyone who has been um, tested to be positive was a big deal. Now for us, we feel convinced strongly by evidence-based data that has been generated from various uh, work we have done that providing capacity, providing self-service capability for individual during crisis, during emergency, during epidemic is a key turnaround point for public health management. So digital innovation around this, I would like to refer to a use case, uh, vaccination as a use case. Here, you require vaccines, you require uh, people to be immunized or cured. It could be either preventive, it could be either curing and eventually uh, having a whole health balance for an affected, um, an affected individual. How does this play out? You put the capability in the hands of the patients, in the hands of beneficiary, in the hands of the public. Social media has taken the date today. How do we convert that into uh, something of impact for the general public? So we have solutions that have been designed that public can easily sign up to for information sharing, for engagement, for enlightenment, and for empowerment. When I say empowerment, still also speaking about COVID. Here you have visibility into where you can you know test for covid or you can take a vaccine and you can as well plan and schedule your visits and by the time you are there you also would love to have some I mean, a timely response timely turnaround and these we we have seen over time has been a bane to development in public service delivery so with that in the hands of a patient in the hands of a beneficiary in the hand of any public person you become better enabled and you become a key player as well because data is generated by the time you interact with those solution and that plays into the analytics or data that is leveraged to generate actionable insights for the stakeholders this is how we have uh, uh, been working and we are looking forward to further uh, opportunities and partnership to bring this more closer to the people. Mm. I like the fact that you took us back to um, when we had the COVID-19 uh, disease outbreak, you know, back in 2020, there was a whole lockdown and all that. And a lot of people had to make use of um, the digital world in quotes. So I like the fact that you took us down that route. And then I, 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 one thing that was um, of importance to me was data. I remember attending one um, event that had to deal with uh, you know, the public health sector, of course, and then the coordinating minister of health at the this time, although he was represented, they did talk about how we need to you know, have data, effective data, collection of data, just so we can um, track health interventions, we can know what to do and what not to do. And back to the digital solutions that you talked about, 
you know, I know, for example, we, we, uh, technological innovations such as maybe in applications for tracking health-related behavior, say monitoring potential health risks and communication and interaction have rapidly changed, you know, many aspects of public health. Now, I'd like to know, um, how effective is this? Because it's not enough to say uh, te technological innovations, digital solution, how effective is it? And then I also would like for you to address the fact that not a lot of people have access to technology. Now let us look at the people, you know, the people in the rural uh, communities. A lot of them may not have access to, you know, this digital solution that we're talking about. So how effective is it and how can we drive policies, you know, and then also collect data just so the underserved population get to achieve the same, you know, um, uh, achieve effective um, health care? Awesome question, I must say. Um, you are giving a whole lot of background already about um, at this point. Uh, one of such is data. Um, it is no news today that it is the oil of any industry. Let me not um, overgeneralize that it is the oil of every nation today, but permit me to say that at this point, right? You will look at historical experiences and you want to draw insight from there. In planning, you will love to also identify what are risk, potential risk for achieving a particular project or a particular program. Where do you drive or derive all this insight from, if not from data? Mm. And then you will also be concerned around the quality of data. Take, for instance, you have a team who go to the field to collect data about a particular uh, health issue. Mm. How do you check the quality of the data being collected? Yes, it goes a long way because um, a lot of experts will have to come to the table to identify the key metrics or the key indicator that should be looked out for mm. or that should be captured and in what format and in what quantity, right? So mm. eventually, when you have this data collected, you want to analyze so that you can draw uh, intelligence from it. And that is insight. Mm. And it helps to planning, to taking action, to going back to the drawing board for whatever reason, because you have now become data aware in your decision making, right? And to make this possible, we designed this solution, providing relevant um, 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 uh, point, data point, where these data are turned in, and we leverage also geographical information system to also pick those data around where these users are assessing the application, mm -hmm. where they are capturing this information from. Is it within a, ge a geographical area that you want to plan a program or intervention around, right? So this all funnel into the central system that data is analyzed, dashboard, and visualized. If it is not visualized, take for instance, between you and I, um, sharing with you just numbers, uh, zeros and one all across, or num um, 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 number zero to nine, you know, wrangling them and just displaying to you may not make much of a sense for you, and it will not even help you to get, you know, to action, right? So digitizing and localizing data to suit the current context is what we do, and we visualize it and bring it to the different devices that are available, and we have the capacity too to make data available to you even in offline mode and that also speak to the areas that we have network connectivity mm -hmm. issues or low capacity around network we also extend our services or capability to sms right um latest data point to great or improved coverage of a uh, network connectivity in nigeria mm -hmm. yes data service may not be it yet but you will check up to 60 to 70 percent to be conservative have access to phone today so leveraging sms capacity people are also informed are able to read a text message and engage and interact then also language translation so that the people in the hitter land or who do not understand uh, our commonly speak a language uh, english here also have access to those information then we also uh, uh, do a live streaming or have center point where people can gather within localities you know you have focal point you have focal people who also make access to this information quite easy and helpful for the people in the uh, local areas so this is how our innovation has been aligned to ensure that 
every participant, every stakeholder that is affected by whatever program or whatever public ed is carried along mm. and they have the best of experience that ultimately funnel into the central system that help for planning, help for action taking and also help for retrospective uh, uh, reasons or retrospective uh, work. Mm. Just so we're not uh, talking majorly on technology, technology, technology. Now let us bring it back to the health facility, say the primary health care center, the secondary and also the tertiary uh, health centers. Now you'd agree with me now that with this uh, current innovation, there are lots of um, health facilities now that you go into, you know, the whole analog uh, technique that they used to use in the past where there has to be documentation, you know, pen and paper. And then a lot of times, you know, the medical records of patients are missing, you know, the files are missing, even though some hospitals still operate in that manner today. But then you'll agree with me that there, there is a lot more uh, development in that uh, area. Now, I'd like to ask, you know, um, we've had reports, we've had issues where, uh, say, for example, a doctor's handwriting, translation of a doctor's handwriting, you know, when it gets to the pharmacy, Maybe because they're in the same field, the pharmacist is able to interpret. But then, let's say in an event, maybe there's, they are unable to interpret. And then, you know, I'm still talking about leveraging technology where um, there has to be, you know, imputation of the patient's details in the system. You know, just send it down to the pharmacy or the, the uh, you know, from the GOPD or the MOPD to the pharmacy and also every other person that is involved in the health center now i like to know how do you think you know um healthcare workers you know the human resource for health now we know that they are really really reducing because of the brain uh drain there are lots of them who are traveling abroad and it has resulted into patients being unable to be attended to at the healthcare facility but now let us bring it back to technology how do you think people these people who are healthcare workers how do you think they can better their skills or some who are lacking in those skills to ensure um, efficiency in public health care delivery? One of the key things that we do is um, capacity building and strengthening. In all of our design, in all of our solution, this is one key component that we eventually, uh, you know, before deployment or releasing that solution into the hands of the end users. The approach for us is one, documenting processes by engaging the process owner to understand how they truly work and of course developing a re-engineering approach where we could propose a re-engineering approach in that we use the technological uh, uh, tools that are available or that we use in-house to orchestrate all this to where we can say yes let's go into food development testing and capacity building because you do not release a solution into the hands of the end user without training the person. Mm. You do not also release a solution into the, or a digital solution into the hand of uh, a user without providing an opportunity for him to interact and see uh, how he can quickly um, assess those solutions and get the best out of them. That is what our capacity strengthening and uh, building approach or part of the process come to play here. And if you agree with me, the telemedicine uh, solution have also made that quite easy such that people at the hinterland with internet connectivity are able to uh, interact with a medical practitioner from far off using the vehicle of internet. And that also go a long way to the healthcare workers as well. Here, the healthcare workers are provided with um, requisite knowledge, training that are streamed or that are made available on the solution on demand. So at whatever time you require knowledge or based on human resource planning, those um, knowledge are broadly shared and they are easily obtained. Some could be uh, free, as the case may be. Some could be specialized knowledge that needs to be monetized based on mm. whatever program or whatever indicators that have been set out. And this enable the team end to end to become more aware or to obtain new knowledge, grow their capacity and be able to deliver requisite uh, 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 result to the stakeholders across the chain. And then perhaps I should point out around 
a particular solution uh, where we have a, a we call it LOMIS. LOMIS is a logistic management information system and it looks at how um, head commodities are planned for, for a particular program, how they are shipped from one location to the other, how they are also disposed or um, how those commodities are eventually utilized in the field. You like to see how this you know, goes around and to ultimately deliver the uh, intended result or output. What happens is you look at what you need for a particular program and the stakeholders or the practitioner come to the table to identify and plan the people, the coverage they will be having. Then they identify the resources they will require to make that possible. And of course, they place an order or a procurement order as the case may be, and the team gets a sign off or across uh, the various uh, uh, authority that need to sign off. And eventually those equipment or materials are shipped, procured and shipped. And then it gets to the warehouse some of them are required to be in a particular temperature, cold chain equipment, and the technology is there also in our hands today to read and provide you insight about the status and viability of those commodities. Eventually, when they are moved to the primary health care centers or to the location where they will be dispensed or used, you can also track real time how they are being utilized and helps you plan and align uh, re relevant resources to ensure that you get the result you want. I like the fact that you talked about health commodity. Now, this now brings me to my next line of question where we look at, say, self-care now. There's a national guideline on that. Now, I'd like, I'd like for you to, you know, um, speak more about it in line with digitization. Now, let's say, say for the case of... Um, people who are exploring health commodities for say testing of hiv right and also testing or treatment or maybe insulin shots for diabetes or say um people who are looking into looking at the available methods for say family planning now these are all let's say self-care right and it is encourage more now in the public health sector where people are advised to you know use more get to know these products and use more of these products just so they reduce the number of patients that bombard the health uh, care personnel and, of, and the uh, people in the health facility and let us bring it back to you how do you think you know digitization can help you know monitor fasten the process of self-care self-care become quite easy, accessible, useful, and meet the particular need of that individual. We have solutions that has made this possible for us already. I'll give you, I talk, I'll talk about Biscuit. Biscuit is blood information system for uh, crisis management and intervention. If you look at the records today, our blood banks are not, uh, the, 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 the stock level at our blood banks are not quite um, impressive because most of the donations are family based. Here, someone who is ill, requiring blood transfusion, you know, uh, gets uh, a family member or his friend or brother to donate blood for him, which is utilized instantly. So, as a result, you don't even have stock available for any emergency or for any quick turnaround. This is a great concern and this is what Biscuit has come to make uh, 18 of the past. And then you wonder, how do you turn those people who are one-time donor for their family members a repeating donor? So it dawned on us that we have to innovate around this particular player. is a key stakeholder because Transfusion cannot happen if a donor do not make himself available and his blood is not tested and confirmed to be suitable as a blood product that can be utilized to save a life. Mm -hmm. So we have innovated and have a solution today that addresses that particular player in this domain, that mm -hmm. is the donor. Okay. So you have a tool today that is called Donor App that help a donor interact and see real time where donations could happen. 
it, donation could be for someone who is living in Abuja, traveling to Kano. Mm. He can check out within this festive period okay. which particular location donations will happen. Mm. And from there, he's able to plan and schedule accordingly mm. so that he's able to receive this care, he's able to receive this interaction and this self, uh, you know, service over time okay. and his time is maximized right. so that eventually the mm. impact is felt and we see the result we are looking at for. How do you think policy makers, you know, stakeholders, both donor agencies and government at national and sub-national levels can help uh, better use this uh, digital innovation? Awesome. Nigeria, our country, and even other countries are lawful entity, meaning there are regulations, meaning there are uh, policy that have been drafted to address specific need. So for us, in digital uh, health uh, technology domain, there are policy makers and there are relevant or corresponding policies that have been drafted and need to be operationalized. For, as a contribution, we provide the data. As a contribution, we provide the feed study and result based on frameworks that have been developed during such program. And this feeding into the bucket where policies are developed and the approach for operationalizing it are also uh, pinned down. And the, in, the players that, are, that need to go out with this uh, work are also identified and it become a thing that all of us can uh, you know, uh, join hands together and drive inclusion mm. and also uh, help to turn around the numbers that the public become better aware and they become, uh, begin to live and improve health uh, lifestyle. Thank you so much. We have been speaking with Francis Ayo, who is a digital project manager for eHealth Africa on impact and potential of digital solutions in public health interventions. I wish I had more time with you to explore further perspectives, but we do hope to have you on this program in subsequent episodes. Thank you so much. Thank you once again for having mm. me. That's the much we can take on the program today. For comments, suggestions, and contributions, do well to follow us across all of our social media platforms and also join our YouTube live stream. Until next time, I'm Aisha Salihu. Thanks for your time. <laughs>